Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Brisman. I'm a neurosurgeon. One of my major specialties is trigeminal neuralgia, and I'll be speaking to you today about getting the right diagnosis for trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia is a very specific type of facial pain and is critical to make the correct diagnosis because the treatments for trigeminal neuralgia facial pain are very different from the treatments from other types of facial pain. The criteria for trigeminal neuralgia are the pains are sharp pains in the face that are sudden, severe, brief, intermittent pains. These are critical features of trigeminal neuralgia. The pains will often also be triggered by light touch in the face, wind, talking, chewing, brushing your teeth. Uh, they are often described as electric shock or stabbing. They are often radiating pains, pains that radiate back to the ear or up the face to the eye or the forehead. They will often be characterized by spontaneous remissions where the pain goes away on its own for weeks or months or years and then recurs. And also the pain is often uh, or usually responsive to anti-seizure medicine called Tegretol. This is classic or typical trigeminal neuralgia. Sometimes trigeminal neuralgia will also have some atypical features. That is, the pain may also have a constant component. There may be some achy components to the pain. The pain may not always be triggered or may not be responsive to Tegretol, although that's rare. But nonetheless, these patients must still have the sudden, sharp, severe, brief pains in the face in the trigeminal distribution, in which case we would still say this is trigeminal neuralgia. To review, the trigeminal neuralgia, the trigeminal distribution goes from the top of the head to the bottom of the jaw, and trigeminal neuralgia is usually experienced in the cheek or jaw in the lower part of the face, and usually only on one side of the face at a given time. Also, people with multiple sclerosis are more likely to get trigeminal neuralgia, and facial pain that is severe in these patients, uh, should, we, one should suspect the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia. In patients who do not have multiple sclerosis, the cause is usually a small blood vessel compressing the nerve where it comes out of the brain, and often a fine-cut MRI will show this nerve contact. In less common cases, there may be a small tumor growth against the trigeminal nerve. So really, in the differential, in the other considerations, the question is what else can cause severe, sharp facial pains? One consideration is something called post-herpetic neuralgia. If a person has had a shingles outbreak, uh, an outbreak of a rash on the face that looks like chicken pox, and this usually occurs in the elderly and usually in the first division of the trigeminal nerve, in the forehead area, after the rash goes away, a person can be left with a pain syndrome that can be sharp, severe, and intermittent. However, the history of the shingles outbreak in that area should give the correct diagnosis. This, this illness would be treated differently than trigeminal neuralgia. Another thing that can be considered is, has there been an injury, post-injury pain or deafferentation pain in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve? These injuries can be a result of accidents. They can be a result of surgery, such as multiple dental procedures or other surgery on the face. They can be a result of intentional injury to the nerve during the course of treatment of trigeminal neuralgia. And post-injury pain in the face can cause pains that can be intermittent and can be sharp, but often a lot of these pains will be associated with numbness in the face, will be associated with constant pain that is dull, that is burning, that is aching, and again, there will be a history of a clear injury or trauma to the face. Now again, many people with classic trigeminal neuralgia will have gone to the dentist and had some de minor dental procedure. Uh, so again, one must distinguish between a post-injury pain in the face and trigeminal neuralgia, which is more of a triggered, sharp, electric shock radiating pain that exceeds what one would expect from dental disease. Another consideration is a, a complex of illnesses called the trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. This includes diseases such as cluster headache, uh, paroxysmal hemicrania, and sunct syndrome. This is another set of diseases that can cause sudden, sharp, severe, excruciating pain in the face. The features that are unique to this syndrome, though, are, first of all, it's usually in the eye and first distribution forehead area. Trigeminal neuralgia, while it can involve the eye and forehead, usually involves mostly the lower part of the face, 
and it is rare, only about 2% of the time will it only involve the first division. The other tip-off is that the trigeminal autonomic cephalgias will usually be associated with autonomic features, things like redness in the eye, tearing of the eye, running of the nose, sweating of the face, um, swelling of the eyelid, um, drooping of the eyelid. These type of features would lead one to believe that it is this diagnosis and not trigeminal neuralgia. Another consideration is an illness called glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia is very similar to tri trigeminal neuralgia, except it involves the glossopharyngeal and sometimes the vagus nerve, other and not the trigeminal nerve. The glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve supply sensation in the deep throat, tonsils, and deep ear. If a person has glossopharyngeal or vagoglossopharyngeal neuralgia, they may experience sudden, sharp, severe electric shock pains deep in the ear or deep in the throat area, as opposed to trigeminal neuralgia that might be more in the lower jaw radiating back to the ear. These pains of glossopharyngeal neuralgia may be set off by swallowing um, or touching the deep ear. Again, these glossopharyngeal or vagoglossopharyngeal neuralgia would be treated differently than trigeminal neuralgia, and again, one must make a distinction between these illnesses. Other common types of facial pain, or the most common, would be dental disease and also TMJ, or temporomandibular joint problems. Again, though, these are usually constant pains. They're usually aching pains, usually set off by moving the jaw or chewing or talking, usually localized to the teeth, or gums or the jaw and different from trigeminal neuralgia. Finally, one consideration is a somatoform disorder. That is, a person may have significant psychological problems and may manifest those problems as severe types of facial pain. Again, this, this is very rare and usually can be distinguished uh, from the trigeminal neuralgia, which is unique in its triggered, sharp, severe electric shock radiating intermittent nature and responsiveness to Tegretol. In summary, trigeminal neuralgia is a very specific type of facial pain. It must be distinguished from other types of sharp and other types of severe facial pains. Correct diagnosis is critical to proper management. Thank you.